There have been a number of studies, some by the U.S. Army's mental health assessment team, some by independent researchers, academic researchers, um, and they all show that if you're under 21 hours a week, you're likely getting positive impacts from games, more confidence, more mental health, better social relationships if you're playing multiplayer games. Um, and if you're playing 28 hours a week or more, not only are you not getting positive impacts, but you're getting negative impacts. So that's kind of, I feel like I want to do a public service announcement because most people don't know these numbers. Maybe we could do what's, see if we can think of something clever. I think that's what we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. Don't play 28 hours a week or more. <laughs> if you can think of a catchy slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Week. It's a fine balance. Three hours a day, yay. Four hours a day, nay. That's, that could be it. There is the slogan. <laughs> You've seen it. Uh, Invented on the spot. Generated here tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's catchy. All right. Um, Let's all say it together. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll have to do that. So, uh, you know, you, you, you mentioned these uh, sort of uh, positive reinforcements, right? So the things that uh, games give you, uh, you mentioned a couple of them, uh, the idea of self-worth, the idea of understanding your capabilities. Uh, why don't you just sort of like, you know, l uh, list a few of them. Yeah. Um, the first is the sort of sense of urgent optimism, which is, I think of it as kind of a radar for opportunities to rise to the heroic occasion. Um, you know, when you're in game world, you're always scouring for that next quest or mission, and you're, you're looking for that person to help or that, 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 that juicy mission to tackle. Um, and that's something that if we brought that to our real lives, a sort of sense of urgent optimism, walk into a room, you know, what's, who's, who am I here to help? You know, what's my, what's my mission? Um, that kind of mindset is actually, uh, it, it, potentially very uh, you know, beneficial to our real lives. Um, the resilience in the face of failure is another big mm -hmm. one. Um, research shows that gamers spend about 80% of the time failing in games, um, which is great research because a lot of people think of games as being a kind of cop-out, like we play them to feel good about ourselves and they're really easy and we win and we have this false sense of capability. Um, but if you think about real life, if you were to spend 80% of the time failing at something, um, that most people don't stick with things like that. They give up and, and find something better to do. Um, and so that ability to learn from our mistakes, to keep trying, to care about a goal beyond our initial sort of failed pass at it um, is this kind of, I sort of talk about it as problem solving stamina that you can keep at it. Um, and also also another potentially really useful tool for real life. Right. So, so like rappers have it totally wrong. Like all I do is win just <laughs> means that they're just sad all the time. It, you know, because it's it, true. What's interesting, but I mean, it is interesting what you're saying because I, I'd say like some of the things that we that we think about as as being uh, ultimate goals in our lives, which are retirement, being incredibly rich, and basically having access to everything. Uh, it, it seems like it's exactly counter to what you're saying. Are the things that uh, kind of promote this use stress? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's one of the craziest studies that I write about in here shows that gamers are happiest right after they've failed. Um, happier than when they have succeeded, as long as they're getting feedback about what they did wrong. So games that sort of show you an instant replay or give you some stat that you understand what went wrong, that is, they've, they've measured people's facial expressions physiologically. That's the happiest moment in a game because you're still engaged in trying to overcome the obstacles, so you're still motivated. You learn something, so you feel confident and optimistic. And, uh, and you feel powerful, like, okay, I can get it right this time. That's, I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty counterintuitive and I think, you know, radical. And, and so why does failure suck so hard in real life? Yeah, um, there are a few things about it. Um, one is that not getting uh, positive feedback about what we actually accomplish through failure. So a lot of times in game worlds when you fail, you still have some spectacular impact on the environment. Um, you know, you can, you can, like my favorite example is Super Monkey Ball. You, do you guys play Super Monkey Ball? Yeah, yeah. you know, if, if you send the monkey, it's a bowling game, you bowl a little monkey in a ball, it's really cute. If you bowl him off the edge of the, the, the into the gutter of space, you, you just see a into space, and you're like, even, even though you failed, you're like, oh, I sent a monkey into space, it was like awesome. <laughs> Um, and the games are designed to make you feel powerful even when you fail, or even in something like World of Warcraft where I'm on a quest and I didn't, I didn't, 
I haven't gotten everything I wanted to get and make all the kills or get all the loot. Um, I'm still getting experience points for trying. You know, right. I'm still I'm feeling stronger and, and more capable. And if and if I keep doing it, I'm either going to win or I'm going to level up, and it's all going to work out. So um, so we need better stats. Better stats and better um, opportunities to 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 relish that we're we're making an impact.